Today we're going to talk about ER collets and five things I wish I knew when I started using them. Let's count them down from number five. Why is there more than one type of collet nut? You may have noticed you can get a ball bearing clamping nut and wondered why are these different to the standard nuts? The answer is the ball bearing type are low friction and increase the clamping force. I actually only just learnt this recently, even though I've had these type of nuts in the workshop for a couple of years. So if you're having trouble with the tool moving in the holder, this might be a solution for you. Number 4. What does the ER number refer to? This refers to the sizing, with ER16 collets being approximately 16mm, well slightly oversized, and ER32 being just over 32mm, so you can see where we're going with this. Number 3. Before we get to the question here, this is my first collet set that I bought about 10 years ago. It came with a few collets, a spanner and a holder. The collets that came with it were 7, 8, 10, 13, 16 and 20 millimetres and they came marked, as they often do, 6 millimetres to 7 millimetres for a 7 millimetre collet. So I used the 7 millimetre collet for the 6 millimetre end mill and the 13 for a 12 mil end mill and I always had problems with them moving in the holder. And of course it seems obvious now, but I was just using the wrong size collet. The ideal collet for a 12 mm end mill is a 12 mm collet, which may well be marked 11 to 12. As you can see in this example, you really have to close the collet completely to make it grip, and even then it doesn't hold properly. Let's try that again with the correct size collet. Just spin the nut on loosely, slide in the end mill, and it's already being held and a quick turn with a spanner and it'll be locked. Right, next up, number two. How far should the collet be in the holder? Is halfway okay? Nope, unfortunately ER collets are designed to be fully supported, so your end mill, or whatever you're holding, should set the full depth of the collet. As you can see here, this is another way to have ER collets not hold properly. So if your tools are moving in the collets, check they're in the collet correctly. Right, number one. I was watching an old video from a popular YouTube machinist the other day and saw the inside lip of an ER collet get machined out because he thought it was mismanufactured. He was obviously new to ER collets and that reminded me how much trouble I had when I was beginning. I thought this was how the collet nut was fitted. And I too was positive the nut that came with my kit was mismanufactured. What possible reason would there be for the lip to be offset inside the nut? The trick here is the collet actually snaps in. You just put it into the largest part at an angle and it clips into the lip. The purpose for it is to allow the collet to be ejected. Otherwise if you use the collet like this, with the nut sitting on top, you'll struggle to pull the collet out. That's why you get the second little tight spot as you release it when this lip kicks into action and does what it's designed to do. So the collet and nut should look like this and the collet should be clipped in and retained on the nut before you install it. This will ensure your collet's being held properly and that it's easy to remove. If you're a beginner using ER collets, hopefully these have been useful and I'm sure these are more common than you'll let on. ER collets can be a real asset in the home workshop if used correctly, not only for tool holding but also work holding. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, check out my video where I attempt to hold a thin part with an ER collar. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Catch you next time.